Welcome back to r slash legal advice, where people ask questions, get advice and we get satisfaction. If you are new around here, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to join our awesome community and without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. This one is titled, Neighbors feel entitled to our driveway. We live in a non-HOA neighborhood in an unincorporated part of the county that is outside the city limits, meaning we have to call the county for any police issues. Our street is long and a somewhat busy thoroughfare to the rest of the neighborhood, but we live at the very end of the street, which culminates in a dead end so there's not a lot of traffic at our end. We bought our house in 2012 and have had problems with one neighbor from day one when we found tire tracks in our front yard from him doing donuts on the same day that we closed. I should note that neighbor has a huge driveway and has basically devoted his whole yard to parking vehicles while we have a strip of concrete and simple landscaping. We have four running cars, our driveway is long enough to accommodate all of them, but sometimes one or the other has to park on the edge of the street at the edge of our yard. The first time we did this we met neighbor across the street face to face when he rang our doorbell and started cussing at us and pointing fingers and how dare you park your car there on our own land and raging about how he almost hit our car backing out of his driveway and how he had to look in the rear window when backing out. Did I mention he drives a lifted truck? So ever since then he's done some passive aggressive stuff, most of which we could not pin on any specific neighbor, but he's the only one who has a grudge. Our mailbox also got mowed down, had to be completely replaced. Also fireworks on pretty much any event always aimed at our house, at the front door, at the garage and at our cars. We have burn marks on the garage door where his kids aimed bottle rockets or roman candles at it. Recently a note left on one of the cars stating, you park like an a-hole. The car in question was fully in our own driveway, not blocking traffic, not on the side of the road. Also a family friend of his came over for a visit and he told her to use our driveway to park in. We came home from shopping and there is a big SUV in the middle of the driveway. We parked on the edge of the street which must have gotten his attention because the friend came running telling us that she would move. But when she did come over she acted like she was doing us a big favor by moving her car out of our driveway. The trash slash recycling is the most annoying. Every single week someone has knocked either the trash or the recycling bin, they come on the same day, into the ditch just behind the mailbox. We have been blaming the garbage man for it, but after over a year of observing this, the garbage guys don't knock over anyone else's cans, just ours. And not both of them, just one of them, last week the recycling bin went into the ditch and it was full and daughter and I had to go out and pick up cans and paper all over the place. While doing so, the neighbor was standing in his driveway watching us and smirking and it dawned on me that he's been doing it all this time. It is not an occasional thing, it is an every single week one of those cans is going down thing. We have even moved the placement of the cans to the far end of our lot where it would be way out of his way to knock them down and they still get knocked down. So I know that I need to get him on camera and I am going to get out some cameras this weekend and I've already staked out where the best place on the house to put them to capture him knocking them down. I'm also going to start sitting outside on trash day hoping to maybe catch him in the act with my phone camera. I realize that this is all very petty but what else legally can I do? What about when I start getting film or video evidence? And a user in the comments said, camera cease and desist letter and reports to the county police for harassment. They will ignore the first 10 reports but if you build up enough of a file they will start paying attention just to stop the squeaky wheel. And guys I'm wondering, did you ever have such an awful awful neighbor? And if so, how did you deal with him? Let us know in the comments. Update to the entitled neighbor's driveway story. This is an update post to the neighbors who have been knocking down our garbage cans and get snotty when we park on the grass. Still in Florida for the location bot, we put up a night vision camera to cover the part of the yard where the trash cans go. We also put up a curtain in the kitchen window which faces the trash can area and I just sat in the kitchen and watched. We did not expect the results we got, it turned out that the mail truck has been knocking the trash cans down into the ditch. 
The male woman drives up and down the street from mailbox to mailbox and we were putting the cans in line with the mailbox. The male lady comes by and down the cans go. Yes, I feel very stupid now. We tried experimenting with putting them in a section of the lawn that is free of mailboxes and not had any cans go down after that. I also talked to some of the people who have lived here in our neighborhood the longest and learned that the 10 to 15 feet of our yard closest to the road is actually a public easement and on the other side of the road as well. I really had no idea about that as the real estate agent never told us that and I don't remember seeing it in the mortgage documents. But I talked to a man at the county offices and he basically confirmed that and said it was because the road graders used to go through and smooth out the ruts every now and again and they don't want to deal with pavement, our driveways are not paved. They actually paved our stretch of the road late last summer and he said they are going to update the codes or whatever so not sure if that land will revert to being ours or not. Anyway, I wanted to let legal advice know that it has all been resolved due to a huge misunderstanding. And guys, if you have watched until here, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments and also like the video if you want to support me. In addition guys, in case you are subscribed already, it would be wonderful if you could turn on the bell notifications in order to not miss any of my videos. Thank you so much in advance. And the next one is titled, Car Improperly Towed, Huge Repair Bill, California. I drive a 2016 Nissan GTR. It was towed yesterday from my driveway, a neighbor had my vehicle accidentally towed, she said a blue Nissan, the effing idiot tow driver ignored the illegally parked Altima and took my car. Anyway, for those who are not car people, the GTR has a rather bespoke all-wheel drive system and if not towed properly, it can cause damage to the drivetrain. I picked the car up and the difference has been grenaded. Even worse, I called Nissan up and they said if you tow the car improperly, you void the warranty, I am now looking at a multi-thousand dollar repair bill. I went to the tow company and they told me to take it up with the HOA as they are the ones who have contracted the towing company. The HOA has told me to go after the towing company, where do I start? Who is liable, the HOA or the towing company? And a user in the comments said, X mechanic here, the towing company was supposed to dolly a car like that because most AWD cars cannot be towed, I would put the blame on them first. They should be the first to get a letter from your lawyer. Learning which cars need a dolly is like the very first thing you learn as a tow truck driver because crap like this happens all the time. Also, get a price for Nissan to tear apart and inspect everything to a point where they will re-enable your warranty. If they go through the whole drivetrain, then so be it. Get that estimate in writing and hand them the bill. I am unfamiliar with liability laws and tow trucks where you are, but a no dolly tow is gross negligence and they are not responsible for damage sign does not mean anything here. Again, chat with a local lawyer first. And guys, if this happened to your own car, what would you have done? And by the way, I just googled, apparently the 2020 Nissan GTR costs around $113,000. Unless I got the cars mixed up and OP's car is some cheap old one. Update to the Nissan story. First of all, a huge thank you to everyone who commented and gave me advice. The post got way bigger than I thought it would. To update on the condition of the car, I filed a claim and the car is being torn down and inspected. Things seem to be looking good, but now they suspect transmission damage as well, so I am almost definitely selling it if they repair the car. As for where things get interesting, a day or two after this happened I started getting written up by the HOA for random things like my grass being too tall, despite the fact that I pay the optional fee for it to be maintained, my house being the wrong color, despite the fact that it has been this color since I bought it. I asked around and the towing company responsible is owned by a member of the HOA board. How in the F is this legal? I have no idea, but yeah. Ever since word got out that I might be suing the towing company, thank you gossiping neighbor, I've been facing complaint after complaint from the HOA and I am seriously considering selling the house and moving. I love how this quickly turned around from an idiot neighbor to horrible HOA story. And the next one is titled GTR towed 4 months ago, final update. 
thanks to everyone who commented and sent me advice, I have a final update. There was an election held and the old members of the HOA were voted out and things had calmed down a fair bit. More on that later, the harassment and all that has stopped, thankfully. The car ended up needing a transmission among other things, rather than get it repaired I sold it to a guy who wanted to tear it down, turbo the hell out of it and use it for drag racing. I ended up using the funds to put a down payment on a 911, so that turned out alright. As for things coming down, I recently got married, the wife and I went to the Caribbean for our honeymoon and while we were gone the guy who owned the Totra company and his son broke into my house and trashed the place. Thankfully we have security cameras that caught them breaking in and they've been arrested and we are awaiting trial, so that got way out of hand. Anyway, I felt I owed the community a final update as you guys have been so helpful and the dust on this carnage has finally settled. And guys, unfortunately that was the absolute final update to this story. I gotta say, things took a very interesting turn here. And the next one is titled, Kansas drone is harassing livestock, what options do we have? I don't know who operates the drone, but whoever this person is, they enjoy harassing our livestock. The drone always leaves the moment someone arrives, unless it is out of sight, not in a particular direction. I have a recording of it too, so I can prove it is causing problems. Some of our livestock have already been injured as a result of this harassment. The drone goes towards the animals from behind and often plays a loud sound, which scares them and causes issues. I already know if it was a dog which was causing this trouble, we would be able to shoot and kill the dog. Can we shoot down the drone? If not, what options do we have? And a user in the comments said, I know what I would do, but this is legal advice, so make a police report. Get on down to your local sheriff and get it on the record. Another person said, I was thinking about how you can shoot dogs that are harassing your livestock, so why not drones? Police report is probably the correct course of action. And the next one is titled, Kansas Update, Drone is Harassing Livestock. Informed the sheriff as suggested here, also handed over a copy of the videotape of the drone harassing the livestock. They said they'd look into it, never heard back. But the drone crashed on my property one day, soon after two teenage boys came to look for it and I didn't give them the drone and asked for a parent to come to collect it. When the father of the boys came, I explained the situation to him and showed him the video footage. He was horrified and promised me that those kids will never get their hands on the drone again. I agreed to not tell the police of what the kids did on the condition that it won't happen again. So far, it has not. The next one is titled, Toronto, Ontario, single person now owns more than 50% of my building's condo units, dissolved condo board and installed themselves. Now she's telling us at the end of the month we won't have our parking spots anymore, is this legal? I bought my condo brand new in 2014, it was a small building, 32 units on 4 floors. It's in a really nice location and I paid a fair amount for my unit. When I first moved in we had a condo management company who did a fine job. Unfortunately late last year we discovered at the board meeting that someone had now owned over 50% of the condos. This person is someone who on several occasions had tried to pressure me into selling my condo to her, she was offering less than what I paid and I wouldn't be able to find an equivalent condo in the same area for the amount she was offering. This person basically voted by herself to dissolve the condo board and elected herself as the sole person in charge of everything. Today I received a letter from our new condo overlord which states by March 1st, our parking spots are no longer going to be available. If we want to keep our spots, we must pay $175 per month. Failure to do so will result in our cars being towed. I have paperwork from when I bought my condo, parking spot 3C was included in my purchase. When I pointed this out to her, about this I was told to more or less go F myself and if my car is there on March 1st, it will be towed. I basically have a single day to figure out what to do, since this comes into effect tomorrow, do I go to try to find legal advice right now? Edit, I have managed to three other people in the building get together to see a lawyer tomorrow. To explain a few things, I do have a title to my parking spot that from my understanding basically says I own that parking spot. 
Next, we only have around 18 parking spots and there are more tenants than spots available. I have nowhere to park aside from my parking lot, street parking is basically good for an hour tops and trying to find a place is like looking for a needle in a haystack. I found out today she is not the sole overlord of our condo board, apparently the other two board members one is her husband and the other is related to her. Her husband owns a towing company, apparently someone is moving into the building tomorrow and has paid for my spot, so if I'm not gone by midnight she's towing my car. And a user in the comments said, if you own this spot and it is deeded to you, she cannot tow you. However, I would recommend getting a real estate lawyer because she sounds crazy and rich. And another person mentioned, you definitely need a lawyer, the condo board must comprise of at least three owners and must act in the best interests of all owners. There are provisions in the Condo Act to force a board to do things or not do things. In one case the board was ordered to personally pay legal costs and the costs of restoring a parking lot to its original condition. Update to the crazy condo board slash parking lot story. I wanted to thank everyone for the advice, me and several other tenants got on board with a lawyer who promptly wrote her a rather verbal letter, which kindly and suggestively told her to pound sand. Since that letter she has completely stopped and retracted all her statements about parking no longer being ours. On top of this one of the other tenants apparently tipped off a Toronto newspaper, I have not seen an article however, in response to this it seems like she has completely changed her mind slash policy on maintaining the building. Now we have someone who actually seems to come every day to properly perform cleaning and maintenance. Sadly regardless of all these changes I am planning on getting out ASAP because unfortunately I feel after a few months she will probably change her mind slash opinion on everything. Edit I forgot to mention, on the night she threatened to have people's cars towed, both me and another person recorded the tow truck driver trying to set up a tow for my neighbor's car. After confronting the tow truck driver about how he was illegally trying to tow someone's car, he immediately took off. We passed that along to the lawyer. And guys I'm curious, has your car ever been towed? And if so, was it justified? Let us know in the comments. Can I be sued for knocking down a drone flying in my yard and then erasing its memory card? This occurred in San Diego, someone has been flying a drone around the neighborhood for the last few weeks. No one knew who it was, but it has been taking video of people as it has a camera mounted below it. It has caught my daughter and her friends in the pool in our backyard multiple times. Yesterday I saw it and grabbed our power washer and my son and I managed to knock it to the ground using it and the garden hose and our lawn furniture cushions. It got a bit damaged so I took it inside to see if I could find the owner. I saw the multiple videos on the memory card including multiple ones of my daughter and her friends in their swimsuits and one of other neighbors as well and erased it. My son is very good with computers and he did a permanent wipe of the data. About that time one of my across the street neighbors came over and demanded his drone back. I refused at first until he could prove it was his. He threatened to call the police and I agreed and did it right then and there. Eventually a cop came and after talking to both of us told me to give the drone back which I did. He got angry that it was damaged but the cop said it was a civil matter and that he could sue. About an hour later he came back threatening to sue me because the memory card was erased and that I destroyed the propeller foil or something when I illegally brought down his drone. And that I am liable for damages for erasing his memory card. He said he could not recover anything and that he was going to sue me for thousands. I laughed openly at him and told him to get off my property or I would call the police again. He left yelling. But am I really in danger of being sued and losing for knocking the drone down when it was flying about just over our backyard and erasing the videos he had taken from inside ours and others backyards? That seems way more illegal to videotape us from within our own yard without our permission. Sorry if this is too long, but I'm not sure what to include. And unfortunately a user in the comments said, you basically destroyed evidence that he was spying on you, a better option would have been to make a copy of the card's contents and leave the data intact. You could then take that to a lawyer to see if he was in violation of any voyeurism laws and determine the best course of action. However now it is simply your word against his 
and it has already been established that you destroyed and vandalized his property. Knocking the drone out of the air if it was directly above your yard may have been kosher depending on how low it was but everything after that was not. You are kind of SOL man. And another person said, so I am not an attorney, but if, as you say in the comments, the drone was flying below fence height in your privacy fenced backyard, that sounds very different than if it were a couple hundred feet above your house. Trespassing and expectation of privacy laws may in fact be more relevant here than other comments are saying. Can you estimate how high exactly the drone was flying? The show is fictional, but a recent episode of CBS's Good Wife had a similar plotline and they made reference to some actual case law. In their story, one of the central issues was the height the drone was flying. Over a certain height, 500 feet, was the jurisdiction of the FAA and under a certain height, 83 feet due to US vs Cosby case, the drone would have been considered trespassing, but in between 83 and 500 feet, the law was unclear. Damage to the drone and deletion of the card data might still be a problem of course. And now an update to the San Diego drone story. I know this sub likes updates, so here is mine. It does not have a lot of legal stuff though, I hope that is okay. There was a lot of behind the scenes activity, one of my neighbors contacted the HOA secretary to get the contact information of the member from that house since she was pretty sure that the guy was not the legal owner. The owners are his step-grandparents and basically don't live there 11 months out of the year. They are RVers and drive around visiting places and their kids and grandkids. And they let their step-grandson, daughter stepson, live there for free. I called them and they were very sweet people and absolutely shocked at what he was doing. I told them what he was doing with his drone and what happened in my yard and what was on the videos from the memory card. I also told them that he was doing the same thing for a few of the other neighbors and gave them the names that I knew of. The next day they called me back and sincerely apologized for what he was doing and assured me that he would never be doing that again and that they were no longer allowing him to live there. Evidently they don't know him terribly well nor do they really like him but they were doing this as a favor to their daughter. I saw him moving stuff into a U-Haul truck this weekend. As I walked by, he said that he was going to sue me for thousands of dollars because of the damage to his drone and then started cursing at me loudly. I had privately decided to pay for his drone damage when approached, but I think now I will make him sue me in court and make him admit to the judge that he was taking peeping Tom videos with his drone. I suspect he will not sue me, if he does I will get the attorney we used before when we were sued for a slip and fall on our driveway to defend me. And the next one is titled, Serious Advice on the Worst Kind of Neighbors, They Fed My Dog Drugs. So we bought our house 8 years ago and shortly after an older woman, her three daughters and one of the boyfriends bought the house next door and I mean 15 feet away, not a lot of space. It has been a constant nightmare since the police have been there repeatedly for anything from them fighting in the front yard to their two year old walking out in the street in front of a car. We live on a main street, lots of traffic. They have had baby after baby, there is at least six kids plus all of the adults. The DEA even raided the house once and arrested the boyfriend. They on any given day are loud and abusive to their children. We had taken all of this up with the chief of police and his response was that It is almost impossible to get CPS to do anything because they don't have time unless the kids were in immediate danger. Apparently being verbally abused is not bad enough. For the most part we brushed off what we could and even at one point tried to be really nice to them that did not last long before they were sending their kids here for food frequently and no they have money, at least they do for their expensive cars. It would take me all night to tell you everything these people have done. That leads me to now, about two weeks ago I saw some guys over there that I know for a fact are registered sex offenders and one of them has been in the paper a few times for burglary and assault. I bought a home security monitoring system, just a few cameras, DVR and monitor, thanks for the advice on that. 
Three days before we were going to install it, their house was broken into. This is the second time the police came over to ask if we saw anything and they agree with us that it was probably someone they knew looking for drugs, but they could not prove that. Now, I have three dogs, Beagle, Beagle Mix and a toy, and they were fine all day, but right before the police showed up to investigate the robbery, someone threw something over our fence and our largest dog ate it. A half hour later he started acting strange and after an hour he was definitely not okay. We took him to the vet and he almost died. The vet thinks that he ate either cocaine or heroin, he is almost okay now, he spent the night at the vet and they monitored him and stuff. He's home now, but it will take time for him to recover. Needless to say, the day after this my husband stayed home from work and installed the system. Now, none of that was recorded and from previous experience they are excellent liars, even the police think so. So my question here is, what can I do about these people? Is the owner of the house, the mother, responsible for what goes on here? I don't want money from them, but is it possible to sue them for the things that have gone on, the yelling and screaming, the kids banging on my door and running away, I just want to scare them into stopping or get them to move, but I don't know what my options are. We have considered moving, but there's no way this house will sell while they are next door. Any advice would be awesome, thanks. Edit, Western New York, sorry, forgot the location. And a user in the comments said, if repeated police presence, charges and raids are not enough to scare them, nothing you can do will. They truly sound like a nightmare and I'm sorry you are having to deal with it. The only thing you can do, other than moving, which I definitely recommend, is to continue to call the police when you witness criminal activity and call CPS when you witness abuse. If you hear them verbally abusing the kids, call CPS, not the police, it won't result in the kids being taken away immediately if ever, but it will prompt an investigation and I doubt things will go well for them if they wind up under CPS supervision. Now that you have security cameras, you can call the police when the kids knock on your door and run away, but there's nothing you can do to get rid of them. Put the house on the market, you may have to sell it for less than you think it's worth, but it would be worth it to be away from these dangerous people. And another user in the comments gave this very helpful advice. My advice is to find a property lawyer and have him investigate ways you could get rid of these people. You would be surprised at how creative a good lawyer can get with this sort of case. It won't be cheap, you can expect to spend several thousand dollars at least, but it costs less than selling your house at a loss. Do they own the home or only rent it? If they are renters, see if you can contact the owner and let him know what is going on. It is not uncommon for an absentee landlord to be unaware of what is going on with their property and most of them would be grateful for the information. If they own the home and you are in a decent sized town or city, you might have better luck approaching your city government than you will with CPS or the police. Many municipalities have rules within their code enforcement mechanism to deal with blighted property that are often used to pressure undesirable people into moving out of a neighborhood. Either they end up paying tens of the thousands of dollars in municipal code violations or they ignore it and eventually the city condemns their home. It is not fast but it is effective. I know that they used this tactic pretty effectively in Florida to deal with drug houses and I would be surprised if it is not practiced in New York as well. Also, if you have any reason to believe they are producing methamphetamines in the house and you have credible evidence of it, you might consider contacting your state environmental protection agency. I'm not familiar with New York environmental law, but many states treat meth production facilities as toxic sites. The EPA can get into the property and search for signs of damage which could either lead to a condemnation order on the property or give the police an excuse to search the house and hopefully find evidence that gets your neighbors thrown in jail. Unfortunately, if they poisoned your dog, it is unlikely that there's much you can do about that directly. It does not sound like the vet could identify the type of poisoning and you don't have any direct evidence they attempted to poison your dog. And guys, I'm curious, did you ever have any awful drug addict neighbors like the person in the story? Or did anyone ever poison one of your pets? 
Let us know in the comments. And to be honest, this story sounds like something straight out of Breaking Bad. Next we will read the first update to the dog's story. So since the last time I asked for advice on my neighbor's situation, my dog has recovered. The vet believes that it was cocaine that he was fed, the police say there is no way to prove it and have not been much help. I have since found out that there is one owner of the house and it is the mother of the people that are causing the problems. I was wondering would it be an option to send her a letter explaining the problems that we have been having with her daughter and the daughter's boyfriend in the house. We were thinking of filing a lawsuit in small claims court for loss of enjoyment but I was not sure if that is a thing. We are not looking for money, I really don't care if we get a penny, I just want their behavior to stop and was wondering if this was a good idea or not. Thank you for your help. Western New York, I don't know why I forgot to put that in. Next one is another update to the dog drug story. So we have been focusing on getting our dog better, the only silver lining to him being drugged was that during the x-rays the vet found a mass on his spleen, so we went in to have the mass and his spleen removed. Needless to say, we have been focusing all of our attention on that. I sent an email to the mayor about some issues in our town. It sounds like him and I are on the same page and he recommends coming to village meetings and discussing these issues. But tonight, oh tonight, it was a perfect day here, warm weather, the little league field behind our house had games going on, just perfect. Until the neighbors came home, the first thing they did was to go to the front porch, because people in the park could see the back, crank up their music and light up. I had my windows open and my son was the first to notice the smell. I called the police and reported the loud music, loud enough to shake my windows and obvious smell of weed coming in my house. Then I went back to what I was doing, about 20 minutes later the police arrived and said stop. As soon as the police left, they sent their kids to the property line by my kitchen windows and they stayed at the front yelling and screaming and blaring music. I saw my other neighbor outside on the other side of the house and went to talk with him. When I stepped out the music seemed to be right in front of my house, I took a couple of steps to the sidewalk and there was one of the women standing directly in front of my porch holding a radio in the air. When the other ones saw me they told her to turn it up and she did but then she started coming at me. Now my husband works nights and they know this, they purposely wait until he leaves before they start messing around. So rather than confront her, I turned and walked over to my other neighbor who had seen all of this go on. He said, the hell with the local police and he called the sheriff's department. I don't know what they did but everyone there left and it is quiet now. I emailed the chief of police but I doubt that will do anything and I also emailed the mayor to let him know that I will be at the village meeting and to recommend a lawyer. So first thing in the morning I will be calling the lawyer and trying things that way. The only other issue is my husband is furious, he is afraid that one of them will actually hurt me and then he won't even try to control his temper. He's generally very peaceful and I've never seen him even yell at anyone but I think this is really wearing on him. Also our dog's surgery has gone well and he is recovering. We will find out in about a week if the mass is cancerous, hopefully not, so keep your fingers crossed for us and thank you for your help. I will let you all know the final outcome. And guys what would you do if someone dared to poison your dog or any other pet you own? Let us know in the comments. Serious final update to the neighbor drug story. So today I spoke with an attorney who said we could sue them but it would be expensive and would get us nowhere. He also said that if these people are unmoved by police that a letter from an attorney would not do much good. We then went to code enforcement to see about the fire hazard their house poses to us and we needed to see if we needed a permit for a high lift to paint the house and he said he will check into it. We then went downstairs and spoke with the chief who is so irritated that his hands are tight, he is retiring this year because of the crap going on in this village, he said he's going to see what he can do but honestly his hands really are tight. It seems like no matter what these people do, it is always brought down to a misdemeanor, even if the girl that followed me last night would have hit me, he said in the end it is only second degree harassment and that is a slap on the hand. 
So I guess that is that. It does not matter that we have never done anything to them. It does not matter that we have never broken the law and we do what we are supposed to do. In the end I guess they have more rights than we do. I appreciate all of the advice on here, but I cannot live like this anymore. This is not how I want our children to grow up. We will try to sell our house and if it does not, we will just have to walk away. As it is, while I was typing this, they were threatening my husband when he went outside and for the first time in 8 years he lost his temper and yelled back. So now that is both of us that acted terribly, he at least had the good sense to come back in the house and not escalate it further. The officer that showed up seemed pretty angry at what is going on. We told him that we had just spoken with the chief this afternoon. He says he wants to talk to him and see what they can do. In the meantime, they are now threatening us with physical violence and I cannot live like this. So I guess they win and we leave. Thank you again for all of your advice. And guys, unfortunately, we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories and if you haven't already, please also go to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube where I upload exclusive Reddit videos starting at just $3 a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from YouTube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.